Okay, moving on from scroll views, let's look at list views. Now this is a way that we can manage the data when we have a lot of it and make our apps more efficient. So there are two kinds. There's flat lists and then there are section lists. So let's take a look at flat lists. Once you understand those, section lists are basically the same thing, just an extra method inside there. Okay, so jumping into our code, I'm going to be starting off with the same application that I had last time. Uh, I've just moved from a scroll view back to a regular view. So if you watch the video on scroll view, you'll know we've got a list of things here driven by this variable right here, data, which has an array called characters. And for each one of these items, we're writing out the name and the profession. Now, because this is written inside of a view, so this is what my render method is returning, this view, I'm unable to scroll. I can't move up or down. I'm clicking, dragging. I cannot move the page. My content exceeds the size of my page. Now, a scroll view let me put all the content in there, but I can't get to the other stuff. And if I was to change this to a scroll view, and this list was really, really long, the app has to load the entire list. It can't do anything to optimize that. And that's where a flat list comes in. I want to do the same thing, but I'm going to do it with a flat list to improve the performance. So up at the top, let's import a flat list. Just like that from React Native, same as all the other stuff that we're doing right now. I've also created a new array. This one's called list. Now we didn't have to keep this old one. I just, I'm showing both just to show the difference. When you're using a flat list and you want to write stuff out, you have to have a property called key. This key property is the one that's going to be the text that we write out inside there by default. We don't have to have anything else, but we do have to have a property called key. Now, inside of here, my view, that's fine. I can leave it like that. My view is going to fill the screen, and that's exactly what I want. My flat list is going to be the thing that fills the view, but then I can scroll that list. So let's start swapping these variables here. Instead of data characters, I'm going to use list. That's my new one. So if list length is greater than zero, yep, great. I'm going to here list map would be how I switch it over, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to let the flat list do the work. So let's remove all of this stuff. So here's my make the list. Here's my I don't make the list. I just write out a message to the user. Now inside of here, we create a flat list component. Flat list component has a data property, which is, hey, what's the list you want to load? Well, it's called list, just this variable name right here. Now, this list variable can be called anything, but again, it has to be an array, and each of the objects inside of this array has to have a key property. Now, we can add a render item. Here. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to have a flat list or we're going to have this text field. Now inside the flat list, what I'm going to do is I basically, my, my goal is to recreate this thing right here. So let's start with something simple, just render item. We're going to put a function inside of here that is going to return something. Let's make it a text component. that. And inside of here, I'm going to write out the key value. Inside of here, I'd want to put a variable like this. Normally when you're running a map method, you just put a variable inside of here. But we want to get a variable, which is an object inside of this variable. So we need to wrap this in curly braces. This is an important step. Without this, you're just going to have a blank list. So this is going to be representing each one of the objects inside of here. So in my return value, item.key, that will be these values right here. So if I save this, there we go. Here's my flat list. Okay, it's all really tiny. I want to try and bump it up a little bit larger so I actually see the scrolling taking place. Um, what I did was right here, 
I've got a list item style. I'm going to increase the size of it. So right here, text style equals styles dot list item. Bump it up a little bit. There we go. Now we see it's off the page and I can scroll. Okay, so that's working. Great. And at its basic, most basic, that is a flat list. That's all it is. A section list, the other one, if we go back to the browser here, if we scroll down to look at section list, section list, same thing. We have a section list and it has this sections part where we say, here's the label and here's the data for this section. So this is like recreating the list from above. And then again, here's the data for this one. So we create all of these. It also has a render item. So you can create a component that will display the items that are inside this array. And then there is a render section header, which will let you create another element. This element is going to be the section header for each one of these sections. So these titles right here, you can see section.title, we're writing out the title and then that's what the render section header does and render item renders the data part. Okay, so that's section list versus flat list, but this is a really basic example. I wanna do something closer to what I had before. I don't wanna write just this one piece of text. I wanna have other data. So I added this other uh, property here for the profession. I wanna write out those values as well. So instead of just text, like this inside of my render item method. Here's my function. I'm getting the item. That's each one of these objects. And I'm going to return. And let's get rid of all that extra space there. Inside of here, I'm going to return basically what I was doing here. So I can take this, copy it, move it up into here. And this is what I'm going to return for each one of the items inside of there. Now we could refer to character and build this the same way, but we've got view with some style on it. So that's the container. And then we've got two text elements. And instead of props.name, we're using this variable here, item. So item.key, because we had to have the key. So that's the name that we have to use and then item.prof will give me the other one. Okay, so we save that, and here we go. Same as what we did before with the scroll, the scroll view, but now with the flat list, I'm going through this whole list, and the, the app is able to be optimized. So that means if this list is really, 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 really long, we don't have to render all of them. The flat list is only as big as the screen. It is not sticking out below here. It's just a scrollable area. And the app understands it doesn't have to render all of these views, these ones that we're creating right here. Not all of these have to be rendered, only the ones that would be visible on the screen and maybe one or two more. So as the person starts to scroll in behind the scenes, what it's doing is it's actually creating these list items for us. So with a really long list, we can get really good performance. As things are moved off the screen, it knows that it can start to get rid of them. It doesn't have to use up all that memory. Okay, section list runs the same way, does the same thing with the rendering. It just has headers in between each of the sections that you want to create. All right, so I hope that helps you out. Hope that gets you to understand what flat lists do. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post them down in the comments. I will leave this bit of code right here with both versions of the data inside of here and this one for comparison as well and feel free to experiment with that bit of code if you found this useful please share it and as always thanks for watching